In this video, we are going to talk about simple and compound interest. The following things will be covered in the video. Number one, we'll be talking about the formulas of simple interest and compound interest. We won't spend a lot of time on this because these are very basic formulas and I believe all of you already have an idea about these formulas. Secondly, we'll talk about present worth very briefly. Again, we'll be talking about it very briefly because this is going to be covered in detail in finance for phase two. And this is more important in there rather than in simple interest. So we'll be, we will be talking about this only very briefly in this section. Third, we'll talk about the shortcuts. These, uh, this is the most important part of the entire video. We'll be talking about three major shortcuts for simple and compound interest, which are going to be very helpful for your preparation. And lastly, we'll understand these shortcuts through three examples. Let's come at the formulas first. Number one, the first formula is very easy to understand. Simple interest is principal into rate of interest into time period upon 100. For example, if you have principal as 1000 rupees, so you invest 1000 at the rate of 10% per annum. Time is, let's assume, 5 years. So the simple interest would be 1000 into 10 into 5 upon 100 which will be 500. So your amount at the end of five years would be simple interest plus principal. So the principal value was 1000 and simple interest is 500. So the total amount at the end of five years is 1500. This you cannot, you can also calculate by cumulatively calculating the rate of interest. Since it is simple interest, so the method is simple, 10% per annum time period is five years. So 50% for 5 years would be the interest that you will be earning. 50% of 1000 is 500. So the simple interest comes out to be 500 through the cumulative simple interest method. Let's come to the next one which is compound interest. There are various different formulas in compound interest. Number one, this is simple one compounded annually. So the amount is principal into 1 plus R by 100 raised to power n. For example, principal is again 1000, rate of interest 10% and n is 5 years. So amount at the end of 5 years would be p which is 1000 into 1 plus rate of interest is 10% into 5. So it will be 1000 into 1 by 10 raised to power 5 by using uh, by doing this we will get the answer of amount so this is how we do compo compound interest this is the simple formula we can also follow another formula which is known as cumulative compound interest we will be talking about this in the shortcuts uh, because that's a shortcut method now the thing that we calculated here is amount if you want to calculate compound interest we reduce principal from amount and if we want to calculate it here itself we just reduce principal from this entire formula and we will get compound interest next in line is compounded half yearly this becomes important in compound interest many students tend to get confused here the amount here is p into 1 plus r by 2 and time period is doubled as 2n why do we do it let's understand Let's take an assumption wherein the time period was one year and uh, rate of interest was 10%. Now this is compounded annually. So the formula is simple. We will be using 1 in place of n and 10 in place of rate of interest. Now let's say the time period is one year again. Rate of interest is 10% again but it is compounded half yearly. So when it is compounded half yearly, it means that after six months, it will be compounded. What does this mean? This means that if I have invested 1000 here at the rate of 10% compounded half yearly for one year at the rate of 10%, then for first five, six months, I will get 5% rate of interest, which will be 50 rupees. And after six months, I will again get 5% rate of interest but this 5% rate of interest will not be on 1000, 
will be on 1050 that is 1000 plus 50 so my money is getting compounded every 6 months this is why we multiply time period by 2 when it is compounded half yearly and divide rate of interest by 2 when it is compounded half yearly if it is compounded quarterly we will follow a different approach we'll, I will be talking about shortly I hope this is clear next is when it is compounded quarterly what do we do then when it is compounded quarterly quarterly is 3 months so there are 4 quarters in a year this is 1 year 3 months 3 months 3 months so if you divide 12 months by 3 months time periods of 3 months each you get 4 quarters so when we are talking about quarterly compounding then we multiply time period by 4 and we divide rate of interest by 4 to arrive at the rate of interest or the amount respectively let's talk about another situation when interest is compounded annually but time period is in a fraction say 2 into 4 by 5 so it is compounded annually so it is simple but the time period is not 2 years or 3 years whereas it is 2 years and 4 by 5 years so 2 years complete and 4 by 5 years out of 1 year so if we want to find out what exactly is 4 by 5 years we will be coming at this answer 9.6 so it is 9.6 months because we have multiplied it by 12 but we cannot use fraction or we cannot use points in order to arrive at the answer it will get very confusing so what do we do is we separate both of them so two years are separate so we keep them separate and then 4 by 5 is one part of the year so we divide multiply r by 4 by 5 and then we keep the time period as 1 this is how we do it when time period is given in fraction when rates are different for different years you don't have any option but to find it out differently or separately so we have r1 r2 r3 as different rate of interest for different time periods this is how we do it when the rates of interest are given different these are the formulas for compound interest let's come at the formula for present worth it's very simple let's take an example to understand this i invest rupees 1000 and i get 10 percent rate of interest every year per annum okay now i want to know i invest this for one year so after one year i will get 1100 because 1000 plus 10 percent on 1000 1100 now i want to know what exactly is the present value of this 1100 how much does this money value today this value is after one year what is the value of this money today the value of this money will be different today how do we find it out we find it out using this formula x here would be the rate of interest so 100 because 100 is received after one year rupees 1000 i have this money today but i don't have the rate of interest today rate of interest uh, will be available after one year upon 1 plus r what is the rate of interest 10 percent here using this i will find out the present value of this 100 rupees so present value of this 100 rupees will be found out using this and that value will be added to 1000 to find out the present value of the entire sum today now how did we arrive at this formula this formula was arrived by using the formula of simple interest or compound interest only so in compound interest the formula was if we look at the compound interest formula simple this is the compound interest formula so amount in future is equal to present value into this entire thing so if you want to find out present value you put the amount of future and then you divide the entire thing by 1 plus r upon 100 raised to power n so this is how we find out the present value of a particular money let's talk about the first shortcut which is the 72 rule there are three conditions in 72 rule which need to be undertaken or which need to be considered first of all we have to find out number of years secondly you are required to double your money so if a question talks about doubling your money only then can you use this rule and thirdly you are talking about compound rate of interest and not simple interest rate so what you do is you just divide the interest rate by 72 and you find out at the and you arrive at the number of years in which you can double your money at compound interest rate 
there are certain situa certain conditions here if the interest rate goes beyond 6 to 10 percent then you need to adjust the rule in the following manner 8 percent is taken as the benchmark rate and 3 percent gap is taken in order to arrive at the adjustment so if the interest rate is 11 percent you increase 72 to 73 if the interest rate is 5 percent you reduce 72 to 71 if the interest rate is 14 percent you increase 73 to 74 if the interest rate is 2 percent you reduce 71 to 70 so this is how you adjust in order to arrive at an accurate answer for the 72 rule we will be taking an example to understand this rule very shortly let's come with the second shortcut which is the difference between ci and si now in questions in certain questions you are asked to find out the difference between SI and CI with same rate of interest this is a condition the rate of interest should be the same then what is the formula or the shortcut that we can use the difference is for two years for two years the difference is P into R square upon 100 square and for three years the difference is P into R square into 3 into 3 plus R divided by 100 cube now keep in mind that if the time period is beyond the three years if it is more than three years then you cannot use this shortcut and then you will have to arrive at, arrive at it manually by using the longer method. So this shortcut is applicable only for 2 years and 3 years. We will be talking about this as well. The third formula is cumulative compound interest. What is cumulative compound interest? You get 10% per annum compounded annually at compound interest and the time period is 5 years. In case of simple interest, we learned that it is simply 10 into 5 which is 50% for 5 years. But in compound interest this does not happen and the reason for that is you are compounding the value every 1 year. So what happens here is if you are investing 1000 at the rate of 10% per, 10 for 5 years at compound interest then after 1 year you will have 1100 at 10% but after second year you will not have 1200 you will because you will not be earning 100 rupees as interest but you will be earning 10 percent on 1100 as interest which will be 110 so the amount at the end of second year will be 1210 similarly at the end of third year it will be 1210 plus 121 which is 10 percent of 1210 so the amount of amount of money at the end of three years will be different so this is why in order to arrive at cumulative compound interest you cannot use the same formula as used in simple interest. What is the formula that can be used? The formula is A plus B plus AB divided by 100. This is the simple formula that you use. So if it is for 2 years then interest rate of first year is A interest of first year B is interest of second year if you want to use for three years then what do you do you calculate for first two years you arrive at an interest rate which is the cumulative interest rate let's assume it is a star this is a star and then again there is something called b star which is the interest rate of third year so you add both you apply the same formula assuming a star to be a and b star to be b and then you arrive at something called a hash which will be interest rate for cumulative for one to three years and then if you have interest rate for four years also given then you do the same so you cumulate for two years and then the cumulated amount is then used with the third year or the next year and then you find out another cumulative and then you use the same amount with the next year and then you find out another cumulative this is how you do these kind of questions where compound interest is given and you want to find out cumulative interest rate why do we need to find out cumulative interest rate is because it makes it easier for us to solve a question it reduces our time it increases our efficiency let's take an example to understand if ci on a sum of money is nine percent for two years overall rate would be a plus b nine plus nine plus a b a b is nine into nine divided by 100 which is 18.81 for three years as i said we use another method and we accumulate for two years and then we add it with the third year and then we accumulate again this is how we do it these are the three shortcuts that we have let's look at certain examples 
to understand the shortcuts better 72 rule the least number of complete years in which a sum of money put out at 20% compound interest will be more than doubled is so the rate of interest is given as 20% Least number of years, we have to find out number of years in which a sum of money can be doubled. So, compound interest, all the three conditions are satisfied. What do we do? It is 20%. So, we apply the adjustment 8 to 11, 11 to 14, 14 to 70 and 17 to 20. This will be 73 here, 74, 75 and 76. So, 76 divided by 20 would be 3.8. 3.8 is not the exact number that we have got here in terms of number of years but it is the closest to the number of years that that, that is the answer so the closest to 3.8 is 4 percent so 4 percent has to be the answer so the answer here is 4 percent this is how we arrive at uh, the not the exactly accurate but uh, significantly accurate answers in the in case of 72 rule so if we had followed the direct approach, it would have taken us a very long time to solve this question. By 72 rule, it took us a very short uh, amount of time. Let's look at the next one. Difference between SI and CI. Find the difference between simple and compound interest on Rs. 12,500 for 3 years. The rate of interest being 8% per annum in both the cases. So, we are finding out the difference between simple and compound interest. We are given the principal, we are given number of years and we are given rate of interest. The rate of interest has to be same for both simple and compound interest. The formula is P into R square into 300 plus R divided by 100. This is for 3 years. For 2 years is for simple P into R square by 100. Let's find out for both of them. If it is 2 years then the answer would be 12,500 into R is 8 percent 8 into 8 divided by 100. This will be answer for 2 years. Let's find out for 3 years. It will be 12,500 into 8 into 8 R square not R cube into 308 divided by it is 100 square here and it is 100 cube here divided by 100 cube. This is the simple formula that we have for finding out the difference between simple and compound interest for a certain rate of interest for certain principle and for a number of years two or three years is what we so the answer here is 246.40 if you solve this question using the shortcut you will find out that the answer is 2.46 246.40 let's look at the last example that we have related to cumulative compound interest the question says Bank of Baroda offers CI under a scheme at the rate of 9% per, per annum. CI it's uh, compound interest, Bank of Baroda is compound interest at the rate of 9% and Yes Bank offers simple interest at the rate of 10% per annum. Which one is higher for 2 years on a sum of 1 lakh? So we have to find out which one is higher. So one method is that you find out simple interest for both years and compound interest for both years and then find out which one is higher. Or this next another method is you find out cumulative simple and compound interest for both years. So cumulative simple interest would be simply 20% because it is 10% per annum so 20% for 2 years. Compound interest for 2 years would be A plus B plus AB divided by 100. So it will be A is one uh, interest rate for first year. For second year again it is 9%. A into B would be 81 and you divide the entire thing by 100. So you find out that the answer here is coming out to be 18.81% which is less than 20% which is the simple interest. So it becomes a lot more easier by using these simple shortcuts to arrive at the answers and most of the questions that you have of simple interest and compound interest belong to these areas because they are considered the most difficult in simple and compound interest. In the next lecture we will be talking about profit and loss as well as DI questions related to simple interest, compound interest as well as profit and loss. We will be covering both DI and quants together in the areas where we have overlaps.